I noticed it uh, yesterday. I think that everybody else is feeling it. You get older, you notice the, the cold weather. And then when I left for work this morning and felt that first gust of temperatures in the 30s. <laughs> Actually, last night was the first night since probably sometime in the early spring that I pulled the comforter, comforter up over my feet while I was in bed. Now, my uh, my furnace, I've not yet kicked it on. I'm trying to hold off on that because, well, I'm a, my sister says a notorious cheapskate. However, I did test it out a few weeks ago, and I've been saying you've got to do that because that first really bitter cold night, you don't want to have uh, have an emergency when you flip that switch and nothing happens. So we've been recommending you call the folks at Ramsey Heating and Electric because They'll come out and they'll check over your furnace and make sure everything is running correctly and efficiently. Efficiently being key there too as well. The team will make sure it's done from Ramsey's and done right the first time. Problem-free cozy winners are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric. 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The telephone number, 6780459. That's Ramsey Heating and Electric where they sell warm winters and cool summers. There is a story today, and it's going to have an impact on our life here in Idaho. You may remember, oh, it wasn't quite 20. It might have been 18 governors across the U.S. said that they no longer wanted to take refugees as part of this refugee resettlement program until they had assurances the vetting process was working better. Uh, our own governor was among the first. Butch Otter was among the first. But you got to keep in mind, this is America, and you can't tell people where they can live. And unfortunately, uh, he can he can only make a lot of noise about it. Among those, though, who were on board with him happened to be the governor of Indiana, a guy by the name of Mike Pence. Mike Pence is taking part tonight in a vice presidential debate in Virginia. He's the Republican vice presidential candidate. Fox said last night, it was during Brett Baer's program, that they did a poll, and a great many Americans have never heard the names Mike Pence or Tim Kaine. I'm sorry, but... I've got to mention that. Um, <laughs> they'll be voting, though, by the way. We should point that out. A Santa Claus is coming to town, and she's promised them a lot of goodies. This is a story that I found this morning at the Washington Times. Court rebukes Mike Pence. Rules states must accept Syrian refugees. States that refuse to help resettle refugees, Syrian refugees, are guilty of illegal discrimination, a federal appeals court ruled Monday delivering a judicial rebuke to GOP vice presidential nominee Mike Pence, who, as Indiana's governor, has tried to stop Syrians from being shipped into his state. Judge Richard Posner, writing for the three-judge panel of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit, said there's no evidence that Syrians are more dangerous than other refugees. And he said even if they are, allowing Indiana to refuse to resettle them would only foist the problem onto neighboring states. He said if Mr. Pence has worries, the governor should report his fears to federal bureaucrats for redress. Which gets back to my point. We've been bashing uh, local politicians and state politicians, county politicians about this subject for a year and a half here. The fact of the matter is the changes are going to have to come from the top. And the one person who could necessarily bring all of this to an end or change that program quickly would be Donald J. Trump. And he has said that he would. 947. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 47. And I also, 48 now. We just jumped a degree. And this comes from Say Anything blog, which is the most uh, important political blog in the state of North Dakota, one of the top 100 political blogs in America. Uh, my friend Rob Port is the uh, the fellow behind this. He kicked this off about 10 years ago and has had great success. They have an issue in his, his state, too, as well. Last week, Fargo City Commissioner Dave Pipecorn asked for a thorough review of the cost to the city of Fargo from refugee resettlement in that community. Pipecorn estimates the cost of the city is in the millions, but he wants a formal review. Do you know what happened? The Democrats on the council and the local newspaper called him a racist for even asking questions about the cost. You see, that's how far we've fallen. It's 948 now, 7360300, the number to reach our program. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX, and you're next. You're on the air. Bill, it's the gated community liberals that want us to take these unvetted, 
uh, people from the uh, uh, different culture into our communities. These gated community liberals, they're protected just like Hillary has a people, a secret service around her protecting her 724. Well, and again, I'll add to this. Thank you for the call. Is that Pence, he may have legal recourse because the judge said, well, you can't deny the Syrian refugees. Can Mike Pence then try and deny all refugees until someone says we've got a better process in place? Hillary Clinton says people have a right, a legal right to come and settle in America. I've got my pocket constitution right over here to my right sitting on the table. I am not aware of any right for some foreigner to come and live in this country and sponge off the current taxpayers. Ten minutes now from 10 o'clock. Caller, you're on the air on Top Story. Go ahead. Yes, two things. Executive orders are supposed to be only for the judicial branch, not for legislation. Second, Article 10, how can they bring them in and force them on any state when Article 10 still says nothing about illegal aliens brought into the United States or that state? Thank you, and I'll listen on the air. Well, and and again, yeah, it, it gets back to this point. Nobody has a right to come to America. Nobody has a right to be resettled here. That's not saying we don't allow it, and sometimes it's not a bad idea. You know, after the Vietnam War, we resettled a lot of people here because they had helped us. And if we had left them behind, they would have gotten killed, tortured and killed. There are reasons you do those things. That's, that's a compassionate reason to do it. But this notion that somehow these people have a right to be here, and if the judge is going to say, well, you can't deny this one group, that doesn't mean you can't deny everybody, because then you wouldn't be discriminating. you just say no to the entire program. Next caller, you're up next on 1310 KLIX. Go ahead. Hey, Bill. Good program. Thank you. You know, therein lies the problem. I am so sick and tired of these politicians that just go on with the status quo, be it Republican or Democrats, that are more concerned about lining their own pockets than was doing what's right for this country, you know? And, and that's why we have this Donald Trump phenomenon. People are just sick and tired of these politicians. I wish they would get off their rear end and earn their living like everyone else has to do here in Idaho instead of just sitting back collecting money and not doing anything. Thank you for your show. Hey, thank you. And as I said earlier, Social Security... Uh, is likely going to be out of money within 13 years. And as I jokingly said, I'm 11 years and six days away from being able to collect at age 65. And that means I might get two years in or a year and a half before it goes belly up. They don't have any means now of, of, of filling that trust fund. Unless, of course, we completely dismantle the military and uh, say, sorry, we're, we're not going to be involved in even defending ourselves. We don't any longer have the money for all of these things. We can't play Santa Claus. Even liberals won't be able to play Santa Claus in a few years. Even if Hillary Clinton is elected and the elites somehow feel that the Trump phenomenon is going to go away, what's really going to happen to this country and this economy and this world means that that phenomenon will only grow. You're next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Hi, Bill. Um If the government and Hillary and Obama wants all these refugees, why don't they move them all to Washington, D.C. on Pennsylvania Ave and see what it's really like to have them? You know, that's the thing. They don't settle them in communities where all of the elites live. Uh, There was a, thank you for the call, there was the research done a few months ago. If you live in northern Virginia where all of your government bureaucrats and lobbyists live and all of the people who are well-heeled in the expensive suits, you know, the the $1,000 suits or more, They don't have these people around, but they're dumping them all out in western Virginia, down in Lynchburg and Roanoke and all of those places, all of those cities that, you know, still struggling to get by down there in the middle of the Appalachian Range, or they dump them in North Dakota, or they dump them in Idaho. You understand, out of sight, out of mind for those people. I was uh, thinking about that this morning as I was driving in. Fact of the matter is, there's no longer any even compassion for the rest of us. Bill Clinton, as I mentioned yesterday, went to Melbourne, Australia 15 years ago, the day before 9-11, 
and called for eliminating all borders and one world government. They didn't keep a transcript, but we know because the fellow who hosted him gave an interview to the newspaper yesterday and reiterated or repeated what Bill Clinton had said. These people, if you don't agree with them, just simply scream racism, 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 because they don't have to put up with the worst part of this. We do. You're next at 954 on KLIX. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, those Muslims, no matter what anybody says, they say good Muslims or bad Muslims. That book, their Bible, is that they do not like us, period. That's the way it is. And sadly enough, and I mean sadly enough, it's not if, it's when some of these refugees do something uh, catastrophic to our country. Well, and once the numbers, and thank you, too, for the uh, for the call, once we get to a certain tipping point, if you will, and it is going to be a tipping point if you just continue to allow it to happen, because, number one, they have a lot more children. Our government will encourage them to have more children. Muslims don't get abortions. Yeah, that's why Social Security would be broke, right? We don't have the uh, people there who would have grown up to pay into the uh, to the fund. But they will have families of seven, eight, nine kids, and this is what's happened in Europe. They may have come in the beginning and may have been in need, and they may have been friendly and easygoing in the beginning, but now that they outnumber people in London, they're, they've elected one of their own as mayor, and they're pushing for recognition of their own laws. So is it a problem today? No. And is it a problem tomorrow? No. But 50 years from now, when your daughter who might be a Christian or a Jew is being forced, or even an atheist is being forced to walk around in one of these uh, burkas, one of these tents, and if another man looks at her, could end up uh, being uh, killed in an honor killing, they're going to force this upon people. That's that's the problem. You know, Rome, up till it uh, up until it fell, the only rival it ever had were some of the empires out of China. And the Chinese empires fell for the very same reason. Outsiders came in. Outsiders changed the culture. Outsiders said, wait a minute, we're going to live as we like to live. When the Muslim mayor of London was here in the United States a couple of weeks ago campaigning for Hillary Clinton, he made a statement that said that Muslims, when they resettle in other countries, shouldn't be compelled to adopt our customs and our culture. Okay, we've never actually forced anyone. Steve Millington mentioned in the last hour people would come here from from Poland or Germany or Czechoslovakia, split in two now, or they'd come here from France or Italy and their various places, and they might live in enclaves of their own, and they'd maintain certain, they'd maintain their uh, their, their ideas of how to uh, live amongst their families, their sense of community. But within a few generations, they ultimately became Americans, and they assimilated much more quickly because they primarily came out of a Judeo-Christian culture in the first place. But this is different. This is ultimately going to be different if they come here in such large, overwhelming numbers. And eventually that will happen. And Rome fell because it opened its doors and made people from all sorts of other cultures citizens of the empire. That's why there's no Roman Empire left today. Oh, I guess the remnants of it are still left in the Roman Catholic Church and even that isn't what it was when you consider a guy like Tim Kaine is, uh, well, you look at Joe Biden, Tim Kaine, John Kerry, Nancy Pelosi, Andrew Cuomo. If that's the remnants of it, there ain't much there. The, the fact of the matter is we're headed the same direction. And yes, we're all comfortable today. What's the big worry? There's no worry today. But doesn't anyone think 50 to 100 years out, obviously not in politics. That's why in Washington they keep running up spending because they think somebody else, it'll be somebody else's problem. They'll all be sitting out on their yachts when everything hits the fan. They can just sail away. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, 959. And uh, I do want to say Rush Limbaugh is coming up following Fox News. God willing, or the creek don't rise, I'll be back here tomorrow morning between 8 and 10 o'clock. Should point out as well, uh, Sean Hannity following 1 o'clock news, Glenn Beck following 4 o'clock news, Dave Ramsey between 7 and 10 o'clock tonight. Have a great day.